Maybe this is your first time using HDR software, so first off, congratulations. Photomatics is a really well-rounded product for tone mapping your bracketed images. So I wanted to just walk you through the software so you can start editing your own HDR images today. For those of you coming from older versions of Photomatics, a lot of the layout remains the same, but there are some new features and settings to run through. So I thought the best way to give you an overview of the software is to use some of my own bracketed images from my Nikon D800. But firstly, I'll explain the layout. So on the left here, you have your workflow shortcuts, and it's down here in a vertical column. And these are the processes you'll be using most. You do also have the option to have this hidden in your preferences. So we have loaded bracketed photos, you have tone mapping, save settings, view settings, batched bracketed photos, and batched single photos. You can also go to a tutorial link. Across the top, we have our menu options, where we control what functions we'll be using and what settings we want them to have. Under File, we have the option to open and load our bracketed photos, or we can open a single photo here under Open. In the Process menu, we have the Tone Map, or Undo Tone Mapping, and you can see they have their shortcuts listed next to them here as Control T and Control Z. In the Automate menu, we have two options listed, and they are both from the workflow shortcuts. You've got Batch Processing, which is Control B, and Batch Single File. Utilities menu offers a bunch of changes we can apply to the images when they are open, including Crop, Resize, Finishing Touch, Rotate, Reduce Chromatic Aberrations, Reduce Noise, and Unwrap Mirror Ball. Our view menu controls what we are seeing in our workspace. So for example, the workflow shortcuts can be toggled on and off here. If you go down to the preferences, you can also toggle on and off a lot of general settings within the software. For example, to not slow down my workflow, I've unticked prompt whether to reduce noise and also show histogram settings as I can bring up the histogram if I need to whilst editing my images. You can tell Photomatics how to treat and save your files. In this section, and even add tags, I've just added the simple tag Luke Seam at the moment and I usually tag software GeoSetter. Here in the performance, you can tell your computer how many of its cores to use. I have mine at the maximum, four, as well as the files uh, show prompt if input HDR file is greater than such and such. This is a greater than sign. It's default at 30, and since my files are 36 megapixels, I had to put in 36. Finally, in the help menu, You've just got some frequently asked questions, you can go to tutorials, your user manual, and updates as well. Being able to just edit one photo has become a really powerful option in Photomatics now. See, you can just open up one image and press tone mapping, and you can just edit the image just like you were editing an entire bracket or set of HDR images. It's a very powerful feature. And Photomatics 4.2.6 also has the old features, and I'll just show you how they worked. So if you were doing a handheld set of HDR images, you could select this Align Source Images, and it's the best I've found out of any HDR software so far. And it will line them all up, and you can select whether you want it to crop the bits that are outside the box. Or you can do it yourself later in Photoshop. There's a couple of other options here as well where you can tell the software how much it's allowed to shift. The Remove Ghost feature is also really well done in this software. It allows you to select areas that you want to remove or just have it do it automatically. I've done a tutorial already before on the manual deghosting, but I can do a quick one just after I explain the noise and aberrations. One that people forget is here is the reduce noise and you can tell it which images to reduce noise on. And so if you selected underexposed images, that would be all your dark images and that would be usually where you're going to find noise in the dark areas. So that's actually a really powerful option to be able to choose where. So yeah, just be aware that that's there. And you can also get rid of chromatic aberrations. So let's go ahead and show you this deghosting tool quickly. So the reason you get ghosting in HDR images is because you are layering five or seven or however many images on top of each other. So areas where it's been still will all align, but areas where you have, say, people walking along, 
they're going to be in different positions every time the camera takes a picture. So we want to tell the software in these particular areas to just use one of the frames and to do it in manual mode on Photomatix 4.26 you drag around areas where you know there's ghosting and you are given a choice of which frame you want to use and you can do this for multiple areas you right click and say that is ghosted then you right click again and you can tell it which frame you want to use since these are really small thumbnails what I advise you to do is to open them in Lightroom and then zoom in and look at which one works for this particular area of the photo so let's just go with zero you can also select another area that's ghosted so let's say the clouds were moving and I'm dragging my mouse around the top back over to the edge here I'm just using my pen pad to do this right click mark as ghosted right click again and then select which photo you'd like to use. Let's use a dark one to make it nice and moody. Now I'll just select preview your ghosting to see if you liked it. And yeah, you can see there's just one shot of the people. The clouds look a bit noisy, so let's change that. So you go back, right click, and let's choose something closer to zero. Preview that again. Yeah, it's a bit bright, but I could probably change that again. So once you click OK, you'll be taken to the actual tone mapping area. And this is where we do all our editing. Down the left is where you've got all your settings and options that you can adjust. And if you're coming from older versions of Photomatix, you'll instantly notice that there are heaps more presets down the right here. And what Photomatix has also done is separate them into different categories. So you've got realistic ones, artistic, black and white ones, and fusion. So if we're just going to all, let's have a look at a couple of those. Here's a photographic one, a painterly, and the presets have the settings done over here and it will just automatically go to those. Here's creative, soft, four, smooth. This is definitely one of the better upgrades that we got in 4.26. Here's adjusted and you can just go back to default. If you ever want to go back to default too, it's just over here. So rather than going through it all, I just went through it myself and used these sliders to come up with a tone mapped image that I liked. What I wanted to point out quickly that has been changed is the black point bit. This used to be really touchy. You can use very small amount, C0.00609, 1, 2, which is a really important feature of the new update. Also, don't look past these saturation highlights and saturation shadows. They can have a really nice change and outcome on your image. Looking at, say, this area fire, let's just adjust that. You can see it just kind of pops out at you, whereas before it was actually quite dull and boring. Okay, so you just select process. So yeah, Photomatix has added some adjustments at the end here of your tone mapping, which are great for photographers who don't own a lot of other software. So you've got color, contrast, and sharpening options as well. And I think they've really enhanced the outcome of a Photomatix tone map image, giving you a more realistic starting image for your HDR workflow. There are also drop downs as well to be used to show you how they work. Just a little bit of contrast color you'd like to increase, red, orange, let's increase the blue. Sharpening is another important one, mild sharpening. And you can select the amount, radius and threshold as well. And just to finish off the edit, you have to select how you want to save it. You don't want to delete everything you've done, so select save as, and you've got three options, a JPEG, TIFF 8-bit or TIFF 16-bit. I usually just save as a JPEG. And there we go. Thanks for watching the Photomatix 4.2.6 overview. And if you'd like to get 15% off any Photomatix software, just use the code LUKESEAM Photography and you're good to go. If you have any questions, just leave them below. Thanks.